in this lesson we are going to determine the amount of energy or work needed by a crane in order to lift a crate of bricks. So here we have a crate of bricks which have a mass of 200 kgs or kilograms and they are being lifted upwards by a crane at constant velocity. I cannot stress how important it is to look out for things like that in the exams. Determine the work done by the motor of the crane in order to lift the bricks. Okay, so here's our crate with the bricks and that crate is busy being pulled upwards by a crane, okay? And that crane has some type of motor. So determine the work done. So we know that the formula for work is the following. And so we need to know what's happening here. So we've got this pile of bricks. I'm just going to do a free body diagram that's being lifted upwards by the motor. And then you've got the force of gravity acting downwards. Now we don't know what the force of the motor is. We can work out the gravitational force, but how is that going to help us to get the force of the motor? Well, here we go. Remember that when you are moving at a constant velocity, it means that the forces acting on your two or on your object have to be balanced because if the motor's force was bigger, then the object would accelerate, and if the force of gravity was bigger, then it would accelerate, but so meaning it would probably slow down. But because we're moving at a constant velocity, it means acceleration is zero, and so that means that the two forces are balanced, and so therefore the force of the motor is equal to the force of gravity. Now the force of gravity, that's easy, that's just 200 multiplied by 9.8 and that's 1960 newtons. And so the force of the motor is going to be 1960 newtons. And so now we can work out the work by saying W of the motor is equal to force of the motor times by the displacement times by the cos of theta. Now the force of the motor is 1960. The distance that these bricks are going to be moving is 50 meters. Okay, so now the force of the motor is causing the bricks to move in this direction and the bricks are moving in that direction. Or should I say rather, the force of the motor is in the upwards direction and the bricks are also moving in the upwards direction and so that is zero degrees and so we're going to say cos of zero. And so now we can go type all of that in on the calculator and we're going to end up with a force, or sorry, a work of 98,000 joules. So that motor is exerting 98,000 thousand joules on the bricks. Does this mean that the bricks are going to speed up? Well, not necessarily because remember the, the work due to gravity would be equal to the force of gravity times by the distance times by its cos theta. And so that would be the force of gravity which is the same as the motor which is 1960. The distance is the same and it would be cos 180 over here because the bricks are moving upwards but the gravity is downwards. And so it would be negative 98,000. And so the total work which is called W net would be zero. And so what we will see later is that only if you have a W net then your object will change speed. But if the W net is zero, meaning if the overall work is zero, then your object will not change speed. It will either stay still or it will move at a constant velocity. So here's another question. Okay, so here's the next question. Here we have a rocket that is flying upwards at a constant velocity. The mass of the rocket is 1,500. Determine the work due to the rocket engines over a distance of one kilometer. Okay, so if we had to do a quick free body diagram, well, on that rocket, you've got the engines that are trying to propel it upwards. Then you've got gravity that's trying to keep the rocket down. Now, because we're moving at a constant velocity, it means that those two forces are balanced. So we can say that F engine is equal to F G and F engine is then going to be equal to F G, which is mass times gravity, which is equal to 1,500 times by 9.8. Let's assume that we're still on close to the Earth's atmosphere, so we'll use 9.8 and that's going to give us 14,700 newtons. Now we want to work out, and, and that, that's the engine by the way. Now we want to work out the work of the engine, so we can go WE for engine equals to FE for engine times by delta X times by cos theta. You could also call that applied if you want, it doesn't really matter. And so the force of the engine is 14,700. The distance is one kilometer, but that's the same as a thousand meters. Now the SI unit for displacement or distance is meters. And then cos theta, so now 
This rocket is busy moving upwards and the engine is also exerting a force upwards. And so that's going to be cos of zero. And so the work due to this engine is going to be quite a big number. It's 14, seven with five zeros, one, two, three, four, five, and that's going to be joules. So the engine is adding a lot of work to that rocket. Gravity, the work of gravity would be exactly the same. And so the overall work on this rocket would be zero. The W net would be zero. And so the object would keep moving at a constant velocity. But the engine itself is busy exerting that amount of energy. In the next lessons, we're going to start looking at how work can cause an object to change velocity. And we're going to look at how to calculate the, calculate the velocities.